rom-coms are bad for people that think this is how it happens. Like they make it like, what is it called? A meat cute. They always have a meat cute. Do you think it sets a bad precedence for people where well, they expect a meat cute to happen or they want their life to kind of follow this storybook fairy tale kind of movie? So it's been argued that the person that really created that problem was Walt Disney um, with the princesses and the animated movies. Um, and you could say that what Walt Disney did was he was just taking brilliantly myth and fairy tale and then the dark side of that, which would be the uh, Brothers Grimm. Um, and that stuff has been around for a long time. The whole idea of a wicked stepmother and a the, the put upon stepchild that's forced to work and can't go to the ball. And then she meets her. Think of Hansel and Gretel. Mm -hmm. or um, not Hansel and Gretel, I'm sorry. What's the one with the girl in the tower? Rapunzel. Rapunzel. Rapunzel's been around a while. Yeah. What is Rapunzel doing? She's up in a tower. She's trapped. She's waiting for the man of her dreams. And he's, right? Yeah. And in, in, in the original Rapunzel, which was much more grim, by the way, the way the Wicked Witch found out that Rapunzel had been letting down her hair is that the original Rapunzel gets pregnant. Really? I did not yep. know. That's, that's the original Rapunzel. Um, so, you know, obviously the prince was making it up into the tower. But those stories have been around for a long time. And if you think about books like, you think of, say, one of the most popular fiction writers ever, Charles Dickens. Yeah. Well, what's he writing about? He's writing about very impoverished people who somehow, through luck, determination, being, having good character, after they go through and we see the effects of poverty, uh, they end up like great expectations. They end up becoming uh, very uh, wealthy. Dickens' stuff originally was published, speaking of how people got their content, you know, his books weren't published as books. They were published in weekly newspapers and you got a chapter. And so you'd have to wait a week for the next chapter. Uh, what's going to happen to Pip next week? Uh, what's going to happen to Pip next week? Yeah. People don't realize that that it was a form of TV, really. Yeah. It was. It was serialized storytelling. So every chapter had to be really good. Something really exciting had to happen, and it had to leave you wondering what would happen next. And this is, you know, when there's a printing press, and that's it. Yeah. Um, and then he ultimately makes his money because there's no copyright, right? So he doesn't make a lot of money off of his books, Dickens. He makes his money um, touring the world, particularly England and the United States, going into these 1,500-seat, 2,000-seat theaters, reading from his work. And people were just like rock star. He was a rock star of his day. And people would pay for these very expensive tickets to hear Dickens read from his own work. And that's, that was how he monetized it. But uh, that sort of precedent for that mythology of the fairy tale has been with us for hundreds of years or longer. And then Walt Disney really figured out how to turn that into an empire, right? Yeah. And he, he claims his one mistake that he regrets. And he was a man who did not regret. He, he, his brother was the financial genius and disney was the create walt was a creative and roy was the uh, the finance guy and walt, walt disney expressed his only mistake that he ever made and they, they three three times they w were going to completely go under and they put every penny of their own money they had to save that studio which is just you know that's belief but um he said the only mistake he ever made was killing bambi's mother hmm. um Interesting. He, yeah so um, but you know all those all those Disney movies. There are entire PhDs written on how that, in women in particular and in general, sets up romantic expectations that ca cannot cannot be fulfilled in, in in real life. Yeah. So I think that's the kind of more uh, genesis of that of D Disney really getting a hold of that formula and realizing he, he can make great movies and people would see them and love them and then go to his theme park to want to meet those characters. Um, so, you know, I think it's that. But you make a great point. I mean, I don't know. I'm, ha I'm happily married, knock on wood, for 18 years. You're, you're a single young fellow. Do you, do you think you're going to 
you're gonna meet someone under funny circumstances and you're kind of not get along get along for a little while you're gonna go on some wacky adventure and ultimately you're gonna have mistaken identity and you're gonna figure out it was just a mistake and then you're gonna get married and live happily ever after and the credits are gonna roll and you're gonna never ever have a disagreement with your partner the rest of your life. 